And bang! What is about Dunkin' Donuts number one fans of the year? Scott Casey Gale here. And today, I'm going to give you my recap and reveal of one of my favorite 1981 horror classics, My Bloody Valentine. Now, I first saw this movie a couple weeks ago on Amazon Prime, and I loved it from beginning to end. I loved it so much that I decided to order this from Amazon.com, which includes both the R-rated version and unrated director's cut, cut version of the film. And I highly recommend um, you watch the unrated director's cut. They restore all the gory parts. But anyway, this is definitely a great film. And I wish I would have went to this movie a long time ago because I loved it that, that much. Anyway, let's begin with the recap, shall we? My Bloody Valentine is a 1981 Canadian slash film directed by George Mahalka and written by John Beard. It stars Paul Kelman, Lori Howler, and Neil Affleck. The plot tells about a group of young adults who decided for a Valentine's Day party only to incur the eventual wrath of an assailant in mining gear who begins a killing spree. Conceived and produced entirely over the course of around a year, the film was shot on location in Sydney Mine, Mines, Nova Scotia in the fall of 1980. It was theatrically released on February 11, 1981 by Paramount Pictures, coinciding with the Valentine's Day holiday Despite a mixed response from critics and grossing $5.7 million at the box office, the film has developed a large cult following over the years since its release. My Bloody Valentine faced notable censorship, having a total of nine minutes cut by the Motion Picture Association of America due to the amount, amount of violence and gore. Though co-producer Darning confirmed that the, ex, that, the excised, that the excised footage still existed, attempts to release it proved difficult as Paramount Pictures refused to offer an uncut version. In 2009, Liongate subsequently licensed the home media rights to the film and released Blu-ray and DVD editions with three minutes of additional footage restored. The same year, Liongate released a remake of the film, which I'm also going to be reviewing later on this channel. Clock. Inside a mine shaft. A female miner takes off her gear in front of another miner. When a woman performs a strip tease, the miner pushes her onto a mining pickaxe, killing her. Mayor Hanniger of Valentine's Bluffs, of Valentine Bluffs, a Canadian mining town, reinstates the traditional Valentine's Day dance, which has been suspended for 20 years. The dance is stopped after an accident in which two supervisors left several miners to the mines to attend the dance. Because they forgot to check the faint gas levels, there was an explosion that trapped that trapped the miners. Here we were and the only survivor but resorted to cannibalism to survive and went insane. The next year he murdered two supervisors who left them there and vowed further attacks if the Valentine's Day dance ever occurred again. Warden was was placed into an asylum and the accident was forgotten. So the dance resumed. A group of young residents are excited about the dance. Gretchen, Dave, Hollis, Patty, Sylvia, Howard, Mike, Mike, John, Tommy, and Harriet. Sarah, Axel, and the, the mayor's son, TJ, are involved in a tense love triangle. Mayor Hanniger and the town's police chief, Jake Newby, receive an anonymous box of Valentine chocolates containing a human heart and a note warning that the murders will begin if the dance proceeds. That evening, Weston Mabel is murdered by a, by a mining geared killer in a laundromat, and her heart will move. Newby publicity reports that she died of a heart attack to prevent a panic. He contacts the mental institution where Harry Warden was incarcerated, but they have no record of him. Hanniger and Newby cancel the dance, but the town's youngsters decide to hold their own party at the mine. A bartender warns them against it, but is killed by the miner. At the party, the miner brutally kills Dave. His heart is subsequently found boiling in a pot of hot dogs being, being prepared in the kitchen. Shortly after, Sylvia is impaled on a shower head by the miner. When the others realize Dave and Sylvia have been murdered, they contact the 40s, but several of the party goers have already decided to to, in, to enter the mines for fun. Newby rushes in, into the mines with police to rescue them. The miner impales a large drill into to Mike and Harriet. 
and, and shoots a nail gun into Hardis' head. Horrified, Howard flees. The remaining four try to climb to the top, top of a ladder, but discover a dead, beheaded Howard. While finding their way out, Axel and Patty are killed by the miner. The miner chases TJ and Sarah, and a fight ensues. The miner is revealed to be Axel, who faked his demise. A flashback shows that Axel's father was one of the supervisors. As a child, Axel witnessed Harry Warden murdering his father, which traumatized him. Sarah hits Axel with a rock, resulting in a, in a tunnel collapsing, which traps Axel as Nubi and the police arrive to rescue TJ and Sarah. The police explain to them that Harry Warden died five years earlier. TJ and Sarah hear a, a rescuer sh shout that Axel is still alive, and they rush back to the, to the scene. They watch as Axel frees himself from the debris by amputating his, his trapped arm. He runs deeper into the mine, shouting, shouting threats to murder everyone in town and mumbling about Sarah being his bloody valentine. The film ends with a maniacal laugh being heard, either Axel, Sos, or Harry Wardens, as, as, a, as a battle for Harry Wardens then plays over the film's credit. And I would rate this film on 5 stars, 2 thumbs up, and 8 triple plus, and a solid 10 out of 10. I highly recommend you 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 watch this film. If you're a fan of slash movies like um Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth, Thief, um Nightmare on Elm Street, the Scream franchise, the Child's Play franchise, say the Sleepaway Camp franchise, then you will definitely love this film. And I highly recommend you watch the uncut version because the uncut version, like I said, has all the gore restored. I mean, the acting is good, the storytelling is good, I mean, the kills are just great, a lot of great, great, great kills in this movie. I mean, everything about this movie is good. I, I really enjoyed, like I said earlier, I really wish I would have went to this movie a long time ago. But, but yeah, like I said, um, I mean, this movie was very well made, I mean, and, um, and I said, Shout Factory did a good job. We're showing, the, we're showing the uncut version, and um, the special features are pretty good, too. Even the commentary is, is good. So if you're a fan of director's commentary, definitely listen to the director's commentary on this. But anyway, I, you know, I will, I, but anyway, I will be back um, here later to do my recap and review of the 2009 remake, which is just as good as um, the original. But anyway, you stay classy, live long and prosper, and peace out.